I understand why you cannot hear me now. It was muted. All right. Somebody muted the studio thing. I don't know. The executive producer didn't want to hear me talk. So welcome, everybody, to um, the Village Radio Talk Show. Um, I'm Roderick Daly, your your host, waiting on our co-host and our guest hostess. Um, y- y- right, Our guest hostess, uh, uh, Judith Charlene Barrett, she's going to join us today. Russell, she's going to join us today on air and going to be bringing in some of our She's directly um, one of our guest hosts from Jamaica coming in and come 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 hanging out a little bit, you know, um, to, just to enjoy our time. Um, so we're this is the Village Radio Talk Show where we're dedicated to empowering the community to live a healthy, safe, uncom. Uh, yeah, well, she can't talk. I know what else here, my youth. That don't make no sense unless you're gonna put the laptop. So she, she can use the laptop. Yeah, she has it. Um, we're dedicated to empowering the community to live a healthy, safe, and financially capable life through education, helping each one of us in realizing our dreams at any age, any point, starting from today. Yes, Janice, he was muted. That's why you couldn't hear me. Um, a lot of things going on in, in the world today. Um, and um, we, you know, we have a lot of things that we need to discuss. But like I was saying, like I was saying, happy birthday to um my father, his birthday was on Tuesday. Happy, uh, welcome back to school for a lot of people. 
Um, this week was the first day of public school in New York City. And this week was also the first day of school in Jamaica, right? But this week, Monday, they don't, they don't celebrate um, they don't celebrate uh, Labor Day. So Monday was the first official day of school down there in, um, uh, in Jamaica. So let me just send out the link to everyone. Um, Andre, long time we haven't played a, 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 a little song. Can we get a little, a little something to get us started? Or do you have a collage from the Labor Day that you want to put up now? All right. So can you just play a little song for everybody? Let them get get excited and happy to join us on the radio, the Village Radio Talk Show. So, right. Um, ex, you know, exciting week. Um, I would have been my first week of work, official work. Right. This is also the first. So it um, it is also important that we. um pay homage to the longest serving monarch in the history of Great Britain. Most of us, right? Not all of us, but most of us were someone who was ruled under our country, not us per se. I don't like to, I, I don't like to, to say that, but our country was ruled under Queen Elizabeth the the second um and so we 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 have none of us um under 70 right none of us under 70 has 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 seen any other ruler besides um the queen queen elizabeth her son now uh Prince Charles is now King Charles, right? The third, right? Andre took on the third. He said, um, so those of you who are who don't have a full understanding of the, the how the monarchy works, when you become um, a monarch, you can choose, um, you can choose a a you can choose a a name. You can actually change your name. Or and but then in succession, what number are you in the succession line? So that means that in the history of England, right? In the history of England, there have been two previous Charles as kings, as rulers, right? So even but so maybe there was a Charles that died, right? So he might have been in line to become, it might have been in line. Um, might have been in line to become to become king, right? But they didn't make it, right? For whatever the reasons are, they did not make it for them to be to be king. So because they were not in line, I mean, because they didn't make it to be king, even though their name was Charles, they're not. They wouldn't be. Um, they wouldn't be there if that if if you follow in the pattern of my my conversation, right? Um. Right. Right. So, um, just, you know, just real quick for everyone, you know, to give, to, to, to do that. So, uh, throughout the show, we're going to have some conversation about it, letting people know what's going on. You can get in touch right here at 718-841-9980. Again, 718-841-9980. I'm alone in the studio for a little bit. John is in a meeting. Joanne is, you know, it, it's going to be a couple minutes late. So I get a, a very rare opportunity of having, um, of having, uh, having the time to be able to talk more with the audience out there. So that's again, that's 718-841-9980. You can shoot me a message, a text on the link um, for, for you. Uh, you shoot me a message right there. We can start the conversation and good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us. Right. I, everybody's finishing up their, their, their vacay. Right, everybody's finishing up their their vacay, 
I know that, right? I know that they're finishing up their 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 vacation. They're finishing up um, whatever they had to do. Um, you know, it, it's funny, right? So let's let me go back to Queen Elizabeth first, right? Because I was watching the the news today when when um when watching the news i saw that they gathered all of her children grandchildren and immediate family members extended close family members let me not say immediate right um right um they they called them to the bedside the moment they called them to the bedside i'm like what's going on right what what really is going on and so, you know, I'm very sad, right? Very sad that, you know, you never want to see somebody transitioning out, right? You don't want to see that, right? You never, nobody wants, nobody wants to see that person transitioning out. And to know that she has been a monarch for, for that many years, you know, you have to say longevity to her to, to, to have lived 96 years, four months. Right. And, and, and in a couple of weeks, it's, 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 I, and those numbers actually is funny because those numbers are very, very important because the next person who lived, they, they actually count them by days. Right. So intend to do something historic. They talk about how long did your record live? Um, so uh in her life she was she came about with the ruler of several great britain so people breaking it down for you great britain is a i don't know if the word you'd use conglomerate of countries that includes wales includes northern ireland it includes scotland and it, it includes uh england right and a, a couple of the places over there, that's Great Britain. But under their leadership, right, as well, they had almost all of the English-speaking Caribbean, right? Um, Australia. Um, he said to send him the link, right? So all of English-speaking Car Caribbean, New Zealand, Australia, uh, parts of the of the uh Pacific Islands um as well right and as you know whether or not you want whether or not you want to I, I'm not here to discuss the meaning of politics and your own personal purview because I know people are gonna challenge oh blah 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 I, I don't want to hear that not right now right I don't want to hear that oh this no that's not what we're talking this is not the the time for that right so what I all I'm saying there is that um America you know in when they came for religious freedom right um in 16 I believe 1608 was the year that they arrived in America to to give um for religious freedom and uh that and to so to populate that's why america is an english-speaking nation right america is an english-speaking nation um for 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 um for most for all of us uh, the french they they can um the french took part of louisiana um, and, and then you, if, if you did your American history, you know about the Louisiana Purchase um, and the Spanish took more west and up from Mexico, right? So you have like the New Mexico, the uh, Tejana, um, which is Texas. Um, and that's why you have a lot of Spanish people. For those of you who are not following the historical component, so you have a lot of Spanish people in the, the the southwest uh, uh, america's arizona nevada texas new mexico and those places have a lot of and louisiana has a lot of spanish i mean a lot of french and florida has a lot of spanish as well right 
So um, the North has a lot more English speak, speaking people because it's where um, historically the English landed. So, and you're going from there until now, you have all of these different things that people have um, addressed and come forward to. So thank you, uh, Queen Elizabeth, for a lot of your contributions to the world, not your country and you um, over the years, you know, under your leadership, uh, Jamaica, uh, Trinidad, uh, Barbados, Grenada, um, Guyana, uh, well, I'm not going to name all of them because I can't do it off the top of my head. But a, a lot of these countries have um, gained their independence. And again, I'm not going to the political view because a lot of people are going to go back and say, ah, yeah, I'm not going to make that art. We're not, today is not to question right, the complete independence of our Caribbean nation. Today's not the show for that. Let's get another show later on if you want to discuss the fact that you still have a governor general and you still have this and, you know, the prime minister. But yeah, all right, that, that's for another show. But under um, her leadership, every country, Caribbean country, is able to have their own um, person that they say, okay, this person is the leader of this country. Okay? The other big thing today Another big thing. So if you have any comments, questions, concern, please do post it in the group. Uh, and in the chat, you could call us at 718-841-9980. You could send me something on Instagram. I'll get it. Um, what's my IG, Andre? What's that? Roderick underscore daily. Right. Uh, Roderick, uh, uh, it doesn't have it. So, you know, some IG and my Twitter. Yeah, so if you put put both my Twitter and the um thing on the the tagline so that you know people can get 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 back to me and then uh you know let me know what's going on. Um the other major thing today that is happening right the other major thing today is that today is the first year school, right? Today's the first year school for um for our local New York City, for most of the Northeast, right? So from Washington, from Washington, D.C., all the way up to, um, to Maine, right? To Maine and some of the Northwest, right? Uh, all of those places, um, a lot of those places is where you have... Um, schools open in today so for more than half of america school has opened today a little bit south yet school started open from august 1st a student in the united states started work opening from august 1st through um today today's the last day of every school in america including um including colleges today is the la last day that colleges open open for students to come in Hey, Dr. Brian, how you doing? Hey, good evening. How are you? Uh, doing well. Looking at you, looking at you. Um, how was your first day with students today? It was great. I think they were excited to come back. I think a lot of people, parents were like, hey, we're ready to go. Bye. And yeah, they're, they're sick and tired <laughs> of the students. Um, did you have a lot of students wear masks and stuff? No. Nobody was wearing masks? Or... I think overall... Um, you have less and less students. You could count on hand how many students were actually wearing masks. What about staff? No. None of them? Mm. Why are you such short word answers, yo? What's, what's going no, on? With you? But... Every, you know, you, you, you know um, the villagers, every time we ask Dr. Bryan to talk about herself, she give one word answers. Because this is not a personal interview one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a personal interview, but the pe you know, you, I, you and I always have this conversation, right? <laughs> as weird, right? As weird. Okay. Be careful what you say on air. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say. 
I'm right. gonna say I'm not I'm not saying anything bad. I'm saying as weird or as great as your thought processes are, other people have them because our ideas are formed by other people, not our own. Mm -hmm. Nobody has an original idea. Nobody. That uh, people could argue that till they're black and blue. Mm -hmm. Nobody has an original idea. What somebody has is an idea that came out of another idea that you might expound upon and start like even the light bulb, right? And the filament in the light bulb. It wasn't the Edison didn't think of it, right? He expounded on some ideas that people get together. Sometimes a group of people get together and because you're the head, you're going to get the credit, but it wasn't because it was just your idea. You just get, you just got the credit because your name is at the top. Like when you're in school, you might have thought of what the hell you were doing for your kids, but because you're not the principal, the principal gets credited for the work. It's up to the principal to get to say, hey, 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 hey. I'm going to give credit to Dr. Bryant. Or it might not, you know, what did, what, what did they tell you in schools? They tell you up front. I don't, no idea is your own. It belongs to the school. Right? So don't think that you have an original idea. So it's important because some people want to know that when you're talking, mm -hmm. that they're not crazy. They're not crazy. Right? Although, although they can be. Right? Although they can be. But so anyway, but I'm yeah. very personal. Yeah, well, you, you um, can't be personal and be on the area. That don't work. You know what? It does work. No, it doesn't. It, it works well. No, that's why I get that. Moving right, right along. Moving that's right, right That's why I get them damn phone calls. When I get I those know. damn... I'll, I'll get the, what, yo, what's up with Dr. Bryan? Why I don't, like, anyway, moving right along. This is not about me. This is about the community. No, no, no. It's just me and you today. So I'm gonna, you, you're going to be hurting today. It, no, it's, it, trust me. I can hold my own. But don't try. No, it. you can't. All you can do is shut up. That's all you can oh, do. You can't really? hold your own. Yeah, okay. that's all you do. All anyway, you do is like, ah, ah there you go. That's what you do. You go. That's what you do. Moving right along. Happening moving right along. In the no, I want to know about the first year school. This is actually interesting. The first year school was great. I think um, we're, we're moving along as a country and settling into the reality that COVID will always be around and you have to keep moving. Life goes on. So, um, 2020 we're in 2022 and life don't stop and we have to keep going because if we pause the problem is um we're losing out more and more each day so the kids are excited to be back children are excited um we're excited to move on the end of the year is coming we're in september first of all september october november december three more months boom the end of this year so we have a lot to do. Can't hear you, mister. I was you talking, talking trash. Was you talking, talking trash over there? No, I am. I am. Okay. We have a lot to do, a lot to accomplish, and a lot to make up to fill gaps. So, unfortunately, our babies went through a lot, and um, we just got to keep pushing, pushing along, because the more we don't do, the greater the gap. So... Parents, I know you're excited for sending your kids back to school. Um, educators are excited about having them back. And we're excited about a new school year. So that's what's going on. You know, it, it, I, I'm, I'm excited too. You know, you know what I'm also excited about? What about? Getting the damn little rugrats out of the house. Okay. Right. You know, time for you. This is the first year that there there is no... Um, real in the last since february 2020 a uh, march mm -hmm. was it february or march it was march right since march 2020 mm -hmm. that there is no major um stipulations on um children going back to school mm -hmm. right or, or anybody for that matter the only thing is that all of the new york city department of education uh people st that still still have the mandate that as a worker in new york city you still have to get your vaccine you know they still they took off the train regulation, the MTA regulation. But um, for what? They don't have to wear the mask anymore on public transportation. So yeah, as of yesterday. Mm. 
So we're moving along. Hello, hello, uh, Mr. James. It is nice to see you on air. Empress, greetings to you, my dear. Miss Sophia, welcome, welcome. And Janice. Um, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Empress, what, 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 what original idea did you have? I could prove to you that your idea was not an in, uh, a, a unique idea. You're I'm just going to argue tonight. No, I'm not, I'm not going to argue, but I want to know. What original idea that you think that you had? There's nothing that anybody has that's an original idea. Okay, you know unless, what I need to talk about? Unless, unless you look at building on someone's idea and giving your own perspective as that original idea. If you want to say that, then I would acquiesce to that. Right? A car, a, a transportation was not an original idea. Making the transportation nicer, okay, no problem. That I could say yes to. I would agree with oh, that. Wait, wait, wait. You know what? I want to go back to, I can say this. You know what was sad? Sad going back to school and thinking of um, where we're at. What do you mean? It was bittersweet, but it was also a little... Um, you know, bittersweet. But what do you mean by where we at? Where we're at in regards to safety, in regards to being vulnerable, in regards to people's lack of regards for lives. Okay, uh, fair yeah. point. So it, it's it's <laughs> that I'm extremely beautiful. Yes, you are, Empress. You are extremely beautiful. Um, Lie, you're, you're, first of all, you're not the first beautiful woman I know. So cut oh, that crap out. Yeah. Okay. So, I cut that out. Yeah, I, I I agree that you're beautiful. I I can't argue that that you're a very beautiful woman. But beautiful to whom? Right, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. You ever heard that conversation? So the now, prettiest, the prettiest woman somebody find ugly, something ugly about them. Okay, so I don't know what you're talking about. You need to cut that crap out. You're done. Yeah, I'm done. I didn't curse. I said crap. I was that cursing? I'm just telling you, I need to stop cursing. He says John is not here, and I'm keeping his, his keeping him, keeping his uh, thought processes alive. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 Doc. You know, um, even with the excitement of going back to school, there's a fear tactic always, and the fear tactic is safety. You know, being safe, a, a new regards to safety, just making sure that there's an appreciation more for our school safety agents, making sure that our students are always safe. That's number one. We, we as teachers, as educators, as administrators have always put safety as the number one goal, but to see the city, to see overall more schools are taking that um, as a priority based on prior events that's taking place, it, it, it changed. It's no longer school as school as usual. Thank God we're not like um, some of the other states who have rifles hanging, in, you know, AK-47 or AK-45, whatever, in, in, in the school building, you know, in the hallways. But there's a new focus on safety, which is important, which is so important because um, not only for your, your mental health, but it's just so much, so much. And you know what? I um, I think that checking in on, on parents, checking in on students, checking in on administrators and their well-being, their mental health, um, how they're feeling, you know, that check up point is so, so important. Like you'll never get the pulse of someone and um, never know where they're at, but try to be aware of that. And um, I would say that our guest for tonight can help us in getting some strategies and helping us understand how can we better prepare mentally as parents, better prepare as educators, better prepare as students to for this school year, even though we're excited about it, but there's a fear tactic involved in it. And how can we check on people's mental health? So bring him on. Uh, well, I wanted to add. Well, is it time yet? All right. Well, I mean, it is time. Yeah, go ahead. You can bring him on. Oh, he's not ready yet, right? So when he comes on, you know, a couple of things. Um, as you're talking about 
safety, right? And mm -hmm. and what's happening, right? One thing I, you know, let everybody know um, that unfortunately, like this week, I, I I lived firsthand what it's like to have to, to through gun violence, right? Um, Same thing. Remember, we were talking two days apart, two to three days apart. Right. Right. Two and and days to, apart. Mm -hmm. you know, and I thought about it like if had I been home, right? Had I been home, um, you know, what could have happened? And it's like five minutes. The gunshot was literally um, five minutes before reaching home. And right? you need, see, and, right. and you're saying being home, being on the street, being at home, um, being in school. So mm -hmm. that is a fear tactic that people can't get away from. Look and, at that 15 year old that got murdered yesterday. And, and I think we we're also talking about the 19 year old as well, like the college student, right? That got murdered, right? When, today? Um, sometime this week, right? I think it was yesterday where a 19 year old uh, who was dormant in Manhattan went to a party. And then when he got to the party, there was a shootout and he was killed. Right? Um, so you, you had that situation as well. Uh, people are still talking about the shooting over in East New York that we spoke about last week that was at a Labor Day party. Um, Labor Day party? Not, yeah, pre-Labor Day weekend party with a woman, uh, backyard party. Okay, right? okay, okay. Not, nothing, related, nothing related to Labor Day. And speaking of which, Labor Day this year was extremely safe, right? Yes, so, it was. So speaking yes. of that, that's why I'm applying for my gun license, by the way. Anyway, moving right, right along. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's all. That's all that. Uh, that's all we we. That's all I told people. That's all you're gonna say. Moving right along, because mm -hmm. dismissive com comment. You. Dismissive. It's okay. I'm dismissing you right now because we're talking about gun violence and you're talking about applying for your gun license in the same breath. And that's that. But that's why it's important. Because if I, you know, I we I literally was having this conversation yesterday. The the states where the cities where gun license are easy to get mm -hmm. have the least amount of gun violence the the cities and the metropolis the, the the parts of the states where gun license have the most stringent laws have the most murders and you can look them up so is so it's either a ban the guns which they cannot do in america because nra has a lot of power Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. can't ban the guns, mm -hmm. right? Either you ban the guns or allow people to carry guns if their mental state allows them to do that. Mental and criminal state allows them to do that, right? So I, because you can't in America with NRA get rid of guns. Not with the NRA. The NRA and the Second Amendment, because it's in the Second Amendment that you have the right to bear arms. So unless you go back and repeal the Second Amendment, America will always be allowed, right? Right? America will always be allowed, Americans, not America, will always be allowed to carry guns, mm. right? So if you look where crimes, go look them up. The 20 cities are cities of the 20 cities out adventure I didn't really, I have to go back and redo the map, right? Um, and the second thing that's on that list, mm -hmm. high, high democratic cities have gun violence. Very high democratic cities have a lot of gun violence. Republican cities don't have it. And in, I'm not saying they don't. That's not you. you I'm, not, I'm not making a blanket comment. I'm not making a blanket comment. That says Democrat is higher than Demo than Republican. The, not, the data shows that cities where uh, the gun laws are most stringent are Democratic cities, and also the most of the deaths happen in Democratic cities. So, so those. So, what does it really say about the gun rights? in america and we're just again we're just talking about america not the world the world where gun laws are stringent the countries they have less violence japan china australia 
right? Right? Those places, gun violence are less because the overall access to guns don't exist. There's yes. no Second Amendment. But I'm, again, it's a flying the student is annoying the heck out of me. Yes. Right? And so that's that. Um, Richard, you ready for us? Richard, are you ready? Hard. I know. I say Ricard. You ready? Can you hear me? Can you shake your head and let me know? I guess he can't hear me. Yeah, man. What is that? And and it's like it's right next to maybe right next to a mic, Andre. The fly is commenting on what we were talking about. <laughs> we're not, no, no, I could hear it in the in like either it's near here or it's in the the mic. The studio is picking it up. Hold on, let me see. Um, Rickard, you can hear us. Mr. G? Yeah, yeah. Now it says you're you're in the show. Everyone could hear and see you now. No, but I I was telling you to give me a thumbs up if you could hear. <laughs> yeah, 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 I see, I, yeah. I know you can hear because I can see you responding to me. How you yeah, doing? Welcome, no. welcome to the village talk show. That's kind of funny. Hey, good evening. How are you? Good How you doing, Dr. Joanne? Good? Great, great, great. Yeah, it's nice to see you guys. Um, are you, sorry you, about are you Are you in the car? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say part of my parents because I was, I just came from a dinner from with a friend. They treated me for a late birthday gift, so I was in transition. So thank you. When, is, when was so your I was birthday? In the middle. On the nineteenth of August. Oh, that's really late. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, uh, make sure that friend treated you to something real good. That's all I got to say. Yeah, okay. yeah. We went to turn, um, on your, um, turn on your interior light. Okay, give me a second. You don't have one in the front? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, try, try the one in the front. As as yeah, because the one in the back, that it, it, the, the visible, the visual is hard to see. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I think this is the best I could do for right now. Okay, Just all right. Yeah. Um... um can we pull them up on screen a little bit better, Andre, so that um, maybe help a little bit? Maybe if I sit in the back, it might be better. Let me see. Uh, try that. Okay, give me a second. No, leave that one on. Leave that one on and sit in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a second. Hold on. No problem. No problem. No problem. So, yeah, 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 yeah Doc. I, 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 I pulled up the, the application. The application is only four, four, four pages long. It's how many pages? Four pages. And part of it has to be filled out by the bureaucracy. Oh, that might be a little better. Yeah, so it's only four pages. So talk to us. Good, good afternoon. Let, let me not cheat Joanna for a favorite question. Her, she likes to start the, with this question. <laughs> Joanne? Good evening. Good evening. Please introduce yourself to our listeners. All right. Um, so my name is Ricard Gino, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I was originally born. A little louder. You got to pull that mic up closer to you. Yeah, sure. So my name is Ricard Gino. Well, I'm from Brooklyn, but I'm originally born in Haiti. And so I came to America at a young age. I grew up in <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. And then I moved to Canarsie. So I did most of my life in Canarsie. That's the neighborhood I raised. Went to school in Brooklyn all the way up to college. And then... Um, I started off in law, then got into social work, and then other businesses, um, my own nonprofit organization as well. Um, I'm also involved in ministry and production. I have my own podcast and television as well. So we doing a yeah, lot my, of Yeah, my producer saying, um, Ricard, that, you, that the volume is a little too low. Yeah. My volume you were fine, so bring the phone closer to you. All right. Or project your voice now? or speak louder or speak louder. Is it better now? Yes. Better? Yes. Okay, yeah. So you have, did you have anything I Yeah, said we heard that? everything you said. It was just low. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, I was So which part of, we're 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 not I'm I'm I grew up in Canarsie as well. Um uh I, I, I live close to my eleven. You know you know where that is? My no. You know, it's South Shore High School. Okay, no. so I taught at South Shore High School. Okay, cool. Yeah. I and uh, I taught at South Shore and Bildersee. I see. Okay, okay. I 
didn't go to neither one of those schools. I was on the other side. I went where did you go? Where, where did you go? To 211 in Canarsie. Are oh, you went to John Wilson? Yeah, 211. All right, were you there with um, Mr. Maisel? Um, no, I don't know Mr. Maisel. I don't know. He was the assistant. How long ago are you talking about? How long ago did you graduate? I'm 34, so I think I graduated. Maybe. Yeah, you were there with Mr. Maisel. You just didn't know him. Yeah. Alan Maisel is uh he was the he just he just retired. Mercedes Narcisse took over as the city council person over there. Yeah, I know her. Right. So so he was eight years city council, right? So he did eight years of city council. Oh, now I, know what you're about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, he, he was a ja Okay. So yeah, you're breaking up a little. Yeah. Can you go back to the front? Because the volume is very low. Is it, are you doing the volume from the car? Maybe that's why. Hold on. Yeah, I think you're right. Because we heard you we heard you just now. Nope. How does it sound now? Perfect. Much better. Okay, good. Yeah, you're right. It was going through the car. Yeah, it sounds perfect right now. The volume. Perfect. Of course, now we have problems. Now we can't see you. Go back, go back a little. Go back a little. Go back a little. Uh, you know what? Perfect. Do me a favor. Your car, right? If you don't sit in the seat, right? Don't sit in the seat. Sit in the middle. Can you sit in the middle? That's so funny. There you go. Perfect. That's much, That's much right. better. Yeah. Uh -oh. And we can hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, but right. I met Mercedes you know, she's through through another friend of mine. So she, I came on the show. We had helped her on her on her campaign trail. So she, I came on my show like twice, and then you know we went to a few events with her, and we run into her here and there. Um, but she would tell me about him. And how he was in the seat before her, and he was there for a very long time, and he neglected our side of Kanasi, um, while the other side, Mill Basin, and um, Bay Parkway, the other sides looked way better. And you know, her whole thing was she's gonna help bring money into our side. And I don't know if you guys are aware, but they're trying to rezone Kanasi again. They're gonna re they're, they're rezone the whole city. Yeah, including so. Kanasi. That's one of the things that she was advocating for recently at the last town hall meeting I went to. Yeah, they were advocating against it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but I was saying that while you were at John Wilson, Alan Maisel, I think you, I think uh, your principal was uh, Miss Susan Farr Carr or something. I don't, I don't remember what it is, but um, it's been that long. So, um, you, 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 you are a social worker, right? You're a social yeah, worker right now. by trade. Yeah, I have a master's in social work with a clinical concentration. From Fordham University. All right. Now, what Fordham. made you get into that? Big dog. That, uh, uh, you know, Fordham U. All right. I feel, I feel, <laughs> yeah. I feel you. Mm -hmm. What actually caused you to go into that? Is it ministry or what, what caused um, you into that? I feel like it was all faith, you know. I was applying for law school at the time I just got married. And then um, I had applied for the LSAT and then I applied for schools. I got waitlisted by Cardoza. And then I had to wait, you know, if you know about, like, you know, the LSAT, you got to wait a few months to take it. Then you got to apply for law school, wait a few months to get a response. If you get on the wait list, then you got to wait to see if anyone switched schools to see if you could get your end through there. And so it was a whole long process. I wasted like a year, year and a half doing that. And then while waiting to get into law school, because I got waitlisted for those or twice, waiting on them to get in. Because no other New York law school I got in there, I did not want to go out of the country, I mean, out of the state for law school. So I tried to get into a New York law school, which is more competitive. So while waiting to get into law school, I randomly got a call from Fordham, and it was like, are you interested in going um, to school doing social work? At the time, I had already was working in the social work field because I was working for uh a law firm, Bender & Bender, it was a social security disability firm, and they filed for bankruptcy. So during the time, they were in bankruptcy court, and I was like, I'm not going to 
risk my future waiting on them to see if they make it. So if I could make it, so I just pivoted. I started working for a nonprofit. I got into a nonprofit sector with Bronx Works, and I was working um, for the home base program. And basically, we was helping people that were in rental arrears that was facing eviction and housing court. And since I had a law background, I would just go to court with the clients that were like on welfare or that were under the 200% poverty level. And that's how I got into politics, kind of, because I started working with politicians in that s- scope. So while at Bronx Works now, it, w- it was a long drive. And then my wife, like, she had a high-risk pregnancy. So then I found a job working in Brooklyn as a housing specialist because I started working with the housing vouchers, the vouchers that the city was creating. Because the city was creating vouchers not knowing if they were even going to work. And, you know... They, they would use us, like they'll basically pay nonprofits to do that work to see if it works out or not. And then they will do studies on it afterwards. Um, ironically enough, it's the same studies that I would later use to write papers in grad school on. Um, so during that time, they had the, the link vouchers living in communities, like trying to keep people that have shelter history and within the homes. And so they had the link vouchers, link one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then um, Mayor de Blasio actually came to where I was working, and I had to show him an example of a family that applied these vouchers and it worked. It helped, it helped keep them out of shelter and explain to him how the voucher actually works so then he could go on the podium and explain it to the press. So that's how I, I, I ended up him. Yeah. Like, I did a lot in a short amount of time. And so after that, I got into being a housing specialist, like, as soon as, the new vouchers were created, like I'll be the one that's testing them and housing people in homeless shelters, like, and putting them into houses. So that way I created connections with landlords and brokers and started moving around the city and getting to know different people. And then, like, you know, that's how I ended up starting my own companies. Like, my non, like while working at that nonprofit, I saw how the nonprofit was able to get bank loans and grow their company while just paying off um, the interest and then they were able to transition into homeless shelter and then eventually use the grants from the homeless shelter started another company that was an LLC and started developing homes and then like putting the people that's within their 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 nonprofit program into the buildings that they own so I did the same thing I created a nonprofit organization of 5.C3 then I created an LLC a real estate investment a development company and then I, I copied off of that model and then while there and applying the vouchers and learning real estate and everything that's when Fordham called and then I was like Fordham I'm like how I'm gonna get in and the guy was like don't the, the guy was like don't don't worry about it just apply and then I said how I'm gonna pay for it the guy was like don't worry about it just apply yeah right and then I did and then you know can you have that guy call me <laughs> yeah, and then, and then like a year and a year and a year and six months, a year and because I because I fast tracked it, I fast tracked the graduation because for me it was like do or die in a sense. Where it's like you know, I was in school in the middle of the pandemic, you know, a lot was going on, so I knew whatever it was, I had to take everything to the next level. So that's that's the mind state I was at. So and it fell in place with the ministry. Cause I grew up in the church, so I'm always able to use the church building to distribute things to the people. And of course, the church is a community of a lot of different people over 200 people in my church, and people from all over the politicians come to my church sometimes, you know, through through meeting me and then you know, helping to promote them and even introducing the congregation and the community to them, you know, and the ties that I have. And so, it, it all works together for the greater good. So I, so I have no complaints. Uh, I'm going to go back to the vouchers you were talking about. Are these some of the vouchers that they send the people to Jersey and forgot about some of the Jersey people? Um, you know, the, the group of people who end up, um, you know, when they were creating vouchers and they had landlords and, and the city was paying for some of their homes, they were sending these families, these wonderful families to Jersey and then the house was dilapidated or whatever, and they end up suing. Um, I know the only, the only 
two vouchers that covered Jersey was soda. Soda was special one-time assistance and, you know, federal Section 8. Um, soda was where they were paying landlords for one year up front. That's soda was a special one-time assistance. They paid a whole year up front to the landlord. Then the client would move in, and the client was able to move any place within the U.S., so sometimes a whole different country if they had proof that they had employment waiting for Wait, them. From, from New York City? Vouchers? They they were able to move out of New York City shelters into any state that they want as long as they could show proof that they would have a job waiting for them where they would be able to afford the rent after one year on their own. Hmm. So a do lot they of, still have some of these programs? Um, yeah, they still do it, but they do it differently now because it's like what you were saying, some of the landlords were taking the year up front and they would like, because at one time all you had to do was take pictures and then send it up because it's not like DHS is going to send somebody down there. That's the here, disconnect. You know? So like That's if it was in Georgia or Florida, then they would just, like take pictures and send it up or take videos or they do it for remote on zoom you know so they'll do a walkthrough but then if they're in person then they'll show up like when i was a housing specialist like they'll call me on zoom and then i'll be the person walking through the apartment showing them the apartment on on zoom or facetime now now how did you get into social work and mental health is it based on some of the families you saw what led you into social work and mental health. So it was like what I was saying earlier, I got into home base and home base was, was a mixture of law and social services. And then I got into the homeless shelter. I started working in the micro shelter for the mentally ill, chemically addicted. And then from there, I was a housing specialist. So I was already a caseworker, a case manager, a housing specialist. And then they was like, if you want to move up, you also got to go back to school, obtain the knowledge, you know, the certification of apply and show the proof of discipline, you know, the diploma, the, the degree. So so I went back to school and then I became case management supervisor. And after that, you know, I went to the next degree, um, director of social service. So I also moved up professionally as well through education and hard work, and, you know, plus I have a, a, a sound resume. So all these talents that I've acquired over time, like I've been just applying them all together. Like social work, there's different levels of social work. A lot of people don't really understand it. Like there's the macro level, there's the micro level, and there's the meso level. You know okay, what break I mean? it down. Hmm? Break it down. So the most smallest level is between me and you, you know, between one and two people. Us just going around, you know, just talking things but not really doing much. Then the middle level would be like, let's just say, a bigger group of people, maybe a people in the neighborhood or people in a church. The group is getting bigger. And as the group gets bigger, then there's more shareholders. So you would say like in the middle level, that's more so people would call them the middle class or whatnot. So then it's like, then you have the small business owners, you have the, the property owners, you have people with a say so, the voting people, the everyday Joe, like the the blue collar people and then at the top you have like the white collar people the politicians the lobbyists the rule makers the lawmakers and all those different parts are all parts of social work they all come together like like sometimes i go to banquets and i go to parties in places and the most important person in the room that everyone is pissing up to is the lobbyist and i'm like What's a lobbyist? It took me a very long time to really understand what a lobbyist is. And to a certain extent, I still don't understand what a lobbyist is and probably won't That's understand. Roger. Hmm? <laughs> That's Roger. Yeah. That's Roger. He'll be able to break that down for you in a heartbeat. Right, Roger? Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Yes, 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 <laughs> Ricard. I can definitely break that down for you. What oh. a lobbyist is. I can't tell you. Full hundred, but I could tell you enough hundred, mm. enough to pass, enough to get that sixty-five or better to pass that class. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe the C plus B minus in that range. Mm -hmm. So now I want to know how. Um, so you're working with young people. Mm -hmm. 
elaborate more on what do you do with the young folks? Well, I've been a youth minister since 2015. Back in 2015, I did my first sermon, which went viral. And then from it going viral, um, I became a youth minister. I got ordained as a deacon at first, and then I got ordained um, as an elder eventually. Um, and then by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and then eventually I became chaplain of the um, of the Franco Haitian Youth Federation. All can't see you now. What all, happened? All of the French speaking Haitian churches on the Northeastern Hemisphere that's part of the Northeastern Conference of Seven Day Adventist Churches. So I've always been mentoring kids in that scope, even until now. There's like the other day, I had a friend. Um, that got married and I knew her since she was a baby, since she was born. So to see her being born and then watching her getting married, I'm like, wow, like I was really there for that. So, you know, things like that. And then there's kids that grew up with me, like, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, I had a lot of friends who I've watched their fathers leave. Like I grew up on a block where at least three people's fathers left, you know, I grew up with a kid. I did not know his father up until we was in our 20s because his father was incarcerated our entire childhood, you know? So when their fathers was gone, I, I, I was left being the oldest one on the block. So while I was learning, they were trying to learn from me while I was still learning, and I'm still learning. So it's always been a situation where I'm at. Mm. There's a question in our chat. How do you work with students and what do you think is the most important thing to consider as the year progress and we ease out of COVID issues? That sounds like a question for you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Ricard, you, you guys know each other? <laughs> yeah, I know her. No, no, I'm laughing because trust me, she would have given the same answer that you just gave right uh, no it, go ahead try it ask her the question and see what she say <laughs> no but it uh, you know i think the issues around mental health right the issues around mm -hmm. mental health and social dynamics right mm -hmm. and she's not a social worker right so she's looking yeah. at we're looking at the social impact and the mental impact of um of students who are struggling coming out of covid going in back to school full-time. Now, you actually... So, so, like, my son, who's in the second grade, right? My youngest son is in the second grade. Mm -hmm. Some of his friends, he has never seen their faces. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? What you just right? said today is, um, <laughs> is so true. Right? These so, kids never see their faces until right? today. You know, so 2020... 19, so, 2019... Are you talking about kids, right? So, when my yeah. kid... When, 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 when my son started school he was in kindergarten right so he was in kindergarten when the when covid hit mm. right so and he had to wear a mask first he had no school mm -hmm. so they're 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 what five years old and the likes mm -hmm. so they're forgetful 2020 to 2021 they had one day of school if that many mm -hmm. And they had to mask up. Mm -hmm. 2021 to 2022, they increased the amount of days they went to school, but they had to mask up. Okay. Right? And this today, because I have that problem myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because, like, even with like Dr. Bryant, we were mm -hmm. we were having a joke. We were at um, the uh, Labor Day festivities <laughs> on Monday, and we were laughing because. She came to my wife's birthday party last year, and I'm a grown man, and she's a mm -hmm. grown woman, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, I didn't, I almost, I had to take a second look at her to know exactly who she was, and not to mention, she used to work with me and for me for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Imagine a five-year-old who's now turning seven, who's now for three years don't know what these students are like. What kind of social impact and anxiety and teachers who didn't see each other? Because a lot of teachers were home 
under special privileges that they only did remote learning. Some of them gained mm -hmm. some weight, lost some weight, gained some height, lost some height, changed the hairdo, changed the this, changed the that. And the impact, they have a family, they don't have a, you know, a lot of social, emotional changes. So as a social worker, what are some things that parents and students and the entire community, the villagers out there, could expect to see interacting um, around what's happening now? I think that's where that question is coming from. Mm -hmm. I think what was mentioned at the very beginning about everyone taking the mask off, I think that's the best thing that could have happened for them. Like, it's almost like they're returning back to normal and they're yeah. being able to breathe. I think those that have social anxiety, those that always had those issues, they'll they'll continue to hide behind the mask because that gives them the escape. And I feel like that was a, an escape for a lot of people. And it was always, it was almost like a way to hide. It's like if I do something that I that I shouldn't be doing, I I used to have the mask. Um, I could put the mask on if I don't want to be seen somewhere. Just put the mask on. But now as we slowly taking the mask off, we're, we're realizing, okay, it's been two years. Who's still wearing the mask and who's not and why? You know what? I'm, I'm, bless you. Salud. Bless you. I'm, I'm starting to have anxiety. Um, mm. I'm starting to see a trend that some people who are still wearing masks are some of the people committing crimes. So, for example... Yeah. Um, yeah, before, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to add to what you're saying. For example, someone came into uh, the building where I am and lady waited for the door for somebody to come out or whatever and then proceeded. But here it is. This woman who stole all these packages or whatever had a mask on. So you can't really describe fully how she looks because she has a hat and a mask so you can't say oh, you know yeah, you know um you yesterday yesterday dr brian i was mm -hmm. driving on king's highway mm -hmm. right i'm uh and uh i was heading home i think i was just picking up um my cousin, right? I was picking up from the airport and we're driving home. And I saw two dudes. I it was yesterday, the day before, one out of two days. Which, which which day was it raining? It was Tuesday, it was raining. Wednesday, Tuesday it was raining. So I just came back from the airport and I was come from LGA. And there are two guys at the at the bus stop. One of them is fully masked up. The other one had on no mask. So you had on the 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 mask that comes over your head, and you could just put the mask here, and mm -hmm. it, you could just see this part of your face. And it's the first thing that came to my mind. Why is he so masked up? Right? Why is he so masked up? So I, 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 I you know, in, 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 when I was an assistant principal in schools, you were not allowed to wear do rags, and I, you weren't, you weren't allowed to wear hoods, do rags, and masks for those reasons, because they had a criminal, a negative, even if you're not committing a crime. Right, which most students were not. Right. Right. So let's get that. I want to be clear about that. Most students do not commit negative behaviors in school, but the ones that do are the ones that wear a lot. Well, the majority of those that do are those that are wearing disguising features, right? Who hits the kid, who takes something. They're wearing disguising features in school. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, the anxiety component, right? That I'm thinking, one, is this person coming to crime or two does this person have some severe illness as to why they're wearing a mask so or kind of is it you know based on because here it is i i have i know someone based on what happened with COVID, they became super neurotic to the point yeah. where you can't even go to their house or anything without them spraying you down still yet because this person worked in the medical field it triggered some form of mental um breakdown for them have you noticed that um record have you come across that by any chance based on COVID, have you seen any breakdown or extreme extremes from yeah. that i would say in my other job one of um the professions i do as a, as, as a psychotherapist 
and a lot of the clients that come in is for anxiety and it is for depression. Um, it is for um, adjustment disorder or mood adjustment disorder. And majority of them say that their anxiety increased because of COVID or they're saying that they're having issues with being around a society or making You muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah. You broke down again? What happened? You know what? He mentioned psycho psychotherapy, right? Am I correct? Yeah, you're muted. I don't know what's going on with your volume. Ricard, we can't hear you. Oh, uh, the phone died. What about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, but if your video is gone. Okay, perfect. But your your video is gone now. The volume is there, but the video is gone. He came back on, but then psychotherapy is something definitely we want to discuss. Yeah. No, what I was saying was that I work for a. Uh, what is a psychotherapist? Firm. Before you do that, what is a psychotherapist? It's like a regular therapy. When mm -hmm. when you sit and do one hour sessions with an individual and then you apply the different psychiatric models. One is like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's replacing negative habits and behaviors with positive habits and behaviors. So let's just say um I I like to watch pornography all day in my house. So how would you correct that behavior do things outside of the house that way you're not at home and that way you're not triggered to to watch pornography because you're at home all day so be an example of that but hey 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 hold on that's roger that's roger's life <laughs> who, who says i want to be cured what, hey hold on a second there. that's not a negative behavior that's positive watch it Wait, watch, watch what you're saying i that enjoy life cool. That was I'm just sorry, me. too much. That was the example, but you don't have. To I know, but I, I don't like that example. That means oh. make it sound like I'm doing something wrong there. You know? <laughs> I'm, come by, oh, y'all. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. Hey, all right. Yeah. That's a little too much. All right. Leave me alone. Yeah, but but a lot of patients they say that the separation that occurred during COVID and the paranoia, not being around people for extended periods of time thinking that people were going to die like the fact that now people are coming out and they have an anxiety socially like people don't know to keep the mask on or to take the mask off um they don't, people even have like issues with dating because of vaccine non-vaccine some some men or women won't date with women that that are vaxxed in case they decide to you know whatever they don't want to get contaminated with that it's like you hear things like that. So all of this is things that are playing in society. But the one that I hear the most was the separation anxiety. And we also yeah. see a lot of families did separate during COVID as well, like being confined to the home. A lot of people, I guess, they got to see the real. It's almost like you had to wear a mask to go out in society, but inside you were unmasked and you got to see the real people around you. So it's like two self. You're having you're having to play a role like you're on TV, and then your real life. That's how it always is. So do you do you come across any children? Um, you have more experience with children in psychotherapy or more adults? I'll say more so young adults to like older people. Mm -hmm. um, probably the youngest was probably like eighteen. The oldest, I would say, maybe in their fifties. Okay. The the younger people, I would say, would be in church, and I would say the youngest is maybe fourteen. The oldest, probably in their thirties, because we also do group therapy sessions at the church. That was something that I started. Um, the I serve um, projects because there was a lot of things going in the church. Like if you think that outside was bad. There was a lot of things going on in church. A lot of a lot of youth in the church were traumatized. A lot of youth left church during COVID. A lot of families from church were broken. And a lot of pastors were impacted by COVID as well. A lot of people switched denominations during COVID. 
all these different things were happening. And when we was trying to, and when church reopened and people were trying to come back, it was almost like they were crawling back. And some people, like, they just didn't come back. And that became the realization. Even today, it's still hard to get younger people to even embrace church because a lot of them felt abandoned during that time. And there was other things that occurred in church that they usually would sweep under the rug. And it's almost like during COVID, a lot of those things couldn't be hidden anymore. Like, mm. so we be able to go to like different churches that was impacted by different things. Like it was this one church and I believe Massachusetts. Don't say, the location. Don't say the location. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the wrong location anyways. But like there was a case where these kids were abused in the church and they were abused for years when it happened in the church. Like sometimes they don't want to deal with those issues head on. And I've had to deal with that where it was like, How did you deal with it? Well, there was a group of kids from different churches that were like raped or molested at other churches and there and those churches and other churches wouldn't give them the platform to speak about it and have like a round table discussion with the youth. We call it um AY Adventist Youth. It's like a round table meeting. And I was the one that advocated to my board to let them have that. And one of the things they said was that one of the things that they said was that they don't want any controversy or they don't want any families. They don't want any issues to occur. So they were going to be careful of what happened. So they did not want for anything of that sort to occur inside of the church. So, so it's better to just, not say anything than to address some of the issues. That's the problem we have with churches nowadays. Wait, wait, stop. Pause. Mm. Pause. Pause. I'm going to cut you with this saying. Mm -hmm. Not all. I didn't say no, all. No, 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 no. No, I, 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 I already know when you're saying something like that, you're not talking. When we make comments like those, it's never 100%. I know that. Right, That's, right, right, that right, right. Some right. people, although some people will jump on you and go, yeah, yeah. No, we know nothing is, no, nobody is finite. Right. What I find is that especially it's, Heidi Twighty society. You have economic, religious, mm -hmm. and color that want to keep everything quiet because they want to avoid embarrassment. Yes. That right. That right. And there. so as a social worker dealing with psychology and counseling people, mm. we have to say look at people to address issues on people wanting to keep things private because you're and remember i was saying something to you today joanne before mm -hmm. dr bryant before um uh mr gene noel you came on which is that as crazy as you think or as intelligent as you think somebody else is thinking like you mm -hmm. but because we're so quiet about things that have happened to us right right there. right so that's what happened in that church and as soon as the things start coming out people are like saying you know I do this too yep experience that too i'm a victim of that too you so, understand what I'm saying? and so that right and so people you, you trust me i'm going through some situation and because i talk about it all of a sudden other people are calling me um to ask me, hey, how you doing? And some of them are calling me when they're about to die. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing at that point when you had a moment when I said something to you that you could have dealt with it earlier had you not been so claustrophobic and private about what's happened with you. And that's what happens a lot of times. So as a social worker, one of the impacts, one of the things that I tell people is learn to do things collectively. So not only do individualized counseling, but also learn to do group therapy mm -hmm. because the group therapy allows you to know people who are in your situation or similar situation. Nobody has the same two exact situation, right? But you have similar situation that you can interact with. That's what I was saying, Dr. Brian, not so much about the church and the, what, and the end of this. Yeah. 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 What are your thoughts? 
no, I agree because there were, like, their thing was for the greater good. They did not want any issues where they would have um, huge scandals or they wouldn't want any families to break up. That's basically what they said. They did not want any families to be affected by that. And so they would rather keep the peace if they could. And they said that they want control. Like, they, they did not want anyone being called out. Like, that's the person that did that to me. That's the person that did it to me. They didn't want that to occur. So, Why? Because they feel like maybe charges will be pressed if they identify the person who actually molested them? In a situation where I now, had... I'm not in leadership still. I hope those individuals that actually did the perpetrating are no longer in leadership. I'm gonna tell you when we had the when we had the the program at AY at my church personally, we spoke about past events that occurred and we spoke about prevention and what they could do and about reporting it. When the other situation happened in the other state where we had to drive to the other state and we did group therapy with them, that individual they were arrested and they are being um, prosecuted. That was a recent event that happened recently. But the ones in the past, those are the kids that are coming forward now. But the one that happened recently, they got him right away. Not right away because he was doing it for years, but when they finally reported well, immediately it, uh, upon finding out. You know, I I did a um, the Village Radio Talk Show had the honor of participating on a sexual abuse um workshop forum where i was the moderator and all of us on the show had a, some level of participation on the show mm. on the event and it, it, you, you could go back if you subscribe to our channel you go back you look at it you'll see it we had people one of the the keynote person um the key persons on the panel was dr tyrone stevenson who brought that conversation um to light about sexual abuse and sexual misconduct as you know within um and what he went through even as a man right because a lot of times males go through it but society tells men not to talk about um we just lost you whatever light you had on was perfect no no the flashlight went out i'll turn it back uh, on. all right right so whatever you know to bring that up as light but i want to um you know wrap up with a question right Mm. And, and um and you know with like joanne she starts off with the guest and she ends with the guest so give her that moment but so i have this question which is mm -hmm. um you you spoke about the fact that you come from a religious perspective and you deal with site with with social work deal with student people with different issues right mm -hmm. i'm a big advocate of counseling mm -hmm. right i'm a big advocate of therapy mm -hmm. christians believe this to me is the stupidest thing in the world. I'm gonna say it out there, I'm gonna throw myself out there. Go say it. Right? It's the stupidest thing in the world to believe that prayer cures everything. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. I don't because think, I don't because, think that's all that wait, wait, hold on. Let me let me let me finish the statement because I don't I always I always when I say something sometimes it's far to the left, mm -hmm. and then people jump in that thought right away without hearing the whole concept. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Right. So, why I say that, I believe in prayer, and mm -hmm. I believe in the work of prayer. Don't that, there's no misconception about that, mm -hmm. right? None, none whatsoever. Because I I strongly believe that if it wasn't for prayer, I wouldn't be here right now. So let's let's just be clear about that statement. Mm -hmm. But what I'm also saying is that if they believe that by praying alone. Right by praying alone, oh something's wrong. You go pray, mm -hmm. and not losing prayer as the route to wisdom of what to do. Right, so so therefore, Dr. Tyrone Stevens, the same person I talk about, who also wrote the book "The Day My Daddy Died," mm -hmm. and we we talked about that prayer gives you religious guidance. You go to the pro the pastor to give you religious guidance, right? What is acceptable in the eyes of God, right? Or what should be if you're the pastor, whatever the case is, versus seeking 
medical help mm. for a an issue. If you have seizure, like I literally saw this happen, and I, I never I was traumatized. In 1984, I was 12 years old. There was a young lady in the church who suffered from seizure. Right? They jumped, they jumped on it and start saying they're praying the demon out of her. And, I'm, and I was 12. I never forgot this. While another person who, had ever, who ended up dying, mm. right? She ended up dying. They, they started praying. Instead of praying that things would happen for her, they started praying for her and she stood there. She, had, she, she ended up having a stroke and became paralyzed while they were doing all of this stuff because they did not seek wisdom in the prayer. So as a cycle, I'm going back. The reason I'm bringing that up is for you to, um, whether or not, whether you agree with me or not, to ask, to tell the people when and how is it appropriate to look at mental health versus Christian health? Mm, that's a good question, Roger. I honestly think that they're both tied in together and I could tie it in together easily. Um, King Solomon, right? King Solomon, um, God found favor in Solomon and God said, okay, Solomon, I'll bless you with something. What do you ask for? And he said, um, I ask for knowledge and wisdom, right? He asked for wisdom. So he got wisdom. Wisdom is what wise doom. So he asked for, he asked for, he asked to be wise, but it could also be his doom. And we got to keep that in content because doom, we call our minds the dome, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's one of the slick terms for it. So he asked for all this knowledge, all this wisdom, and we saw how smart Solomon was. But what brought him to his doom was when he started to worship the gods of other women, the women that came in his life, and they became demons onto him. And if we put all that into content, when he starts to serve their gods, and according to what his gods say, there are there are no other gods. So if there there are no other gods, then he basically was serving the demons of these other women, or the demons that came with these other women, and that's how he eventually lost his mind. So what message do we get from that? It's like okay, if we stay on the straight and narrow, we stay humble, we we stay in prayer, and we do works, it's because. Faith without works is, is a waste of time. Anyone that says that they're a Christian, but they only believe in prayer, that they don't believe in doing works, then they're not really a Christian because they could just look at the... A Christian is, is that that follows the life of Christ and the teachings of Christ and his principles. So if we look at the life of Christ, Christ put in work every time he had a chance. When people was following him and they followed him for days and he was like, did these people eat? And they was like, no, how are you going to feed all these people? He fed those people. When there were people amongst them that was sick or that was um, who, who was blind, he healed those people. So he put in the work. Like when the boat was shaking and, and it was about to sink, he, he walked on water and he helped those people. So it's not like he just sat around and chilled and he just prayed. Like, no, like he would pray to the Father, then he would do the work afterwards. So I feel like it's... I like that. It's, it's all in like the same... Like I've been to, I've been to therapists that were pastors, just like how when people come to me and then, you know, I apply the same principles. Like I said, we did group therapy in church. So multiple times. So it was never like, like a bridging divide. I feel like there are superstitions. Like there are people that feel like there's demons and things like that. But if you believe in God and you believe in the devil, then you have to believe in demons the same way you believe in angels. So it's all in content. Like, schizophrenia, we could say that people hear a lot of different voices. Um, one of the, the things that bring um, schizophrenia is psychosis. One of the things that could cause psychosis is drugs. People say when they smoke weed or when they get high or on other things, um, LSD and stuff, they hear voices. They see colors. They see demons. Like, what do you think you're doing? Like, what do you, what, what do you think Solomon was doing with these women? Like, we know he was having sex with them, so... If he's having sex with them, then what else is he indulging in to make to alter his mindset, to to alter his mind state where he forgets who God is and he loses himself? So we could apply that to like us the, the same exact way. That most of the time when people go to church or they go unto God is because they they tried everything else. You know, same way how 
how when you grow up, you found, you go to church and then you lose yourself. A lot of people, they go to jail and they find God or they find Allah or people get baptized. Like I gave my life to Christ. I didn't live this crazy life. They go in front of church, they give the testimony and they wouldn't have the testimony to give if they didn't live that life. So it's like what the book tell you. There's, there's good and it's bad. As above, so below. So it's your decision. But most of us choose to be the prodigal son. So prayer is always going to be there. It's like God is always going to be there. Yeah, I, I think that, that that all of those are, are very positive points because it's, it's the point about having the role and the understanding of what it is that you need to do. But for me, I tell people always, God guides, God guides my life. Like, it guides my decision. You don't always have to agree with my decision. Sometimes I have to, you know, but I, I do know that um, when I pray, when I pray for you, when I walk with you, I, I walk in the in the mindset of a godly person. And I get, you know, so that's how that is. But I also have to say to somebody, hey, when I'm teaching your kid, right, I'm hoping that God will give me the knowledge to educate your child in the way that will make that child come out to be something positive. I'm never going to, in my mind, I'm never going to tell you something that is not going to make your child better. But I'm also not going to sit there and say to you, okay, by praying to the book, all the knowledge in the book is going to go into your head. Right. And, and I think that sometimes people make that that unfortunate negative correlation. Like oh, I, I didn't open the book and study at all, but I'm going to go and to pray. school and, and pray. And all of a sudden, everything that my teacher taught is now going to um, manifest itself in the book. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, um, Ricard, this is uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, hanging out with you today, talking to you about social work, housing, and the different issues that you brought up and how society and religion, right? The impact of religion on on um, on individuals and letting people know that that believing in God is an important factor. Um, Dr. Bryant? Yeah, so how can people reach you? Um, if you want to find me on Facebook, you could type in the Real Word Ministries Inc. on Facebook, the Real Word Ministries Inc. on Facebook, or the Real Word TV on Facebook. You could follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Rickstar1875 on Facebook, Rickstar1875, um, or the Real Word Ministries Inc. on Instagram, the Real Word Ministries Inc. Check us out on YouTube, the Real Word TV, um, the Real Word TV as one word on YouTube. Or put is that the real word w o r d yeah like the word of god yeah the okay. real tv you, you mentioned you have a podcast is that what the podcast is the real word yeah so the real word the real word comes on television podcast facebook live and youtube so so we just shoot it live so we shoot it live to facebook then we save it then we send the copy to the tv station then we rip the sound out we put the sound on SoundCloud, Spotify, Pandora, and Apple Podcast, and then we put the rest on YouTube. All right, uh, you know, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to, 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 to Rick Star, 1875. What's that? That's 1875. That 18 one year January. Nah, man, that's something. Oh, the, <laughs> uh, uh, it can't be January because the, so you got to take the eight, put it to the front, put the seven to a nine. You got your birthday. No, nah, that's not it. Neither. No. I'm, I'm not, I know it's, that's not it. I'm saying, <laughs> I remember when you said your birthday was. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because you just came up. Oh, no. My birthday is August 19th. August 19th. Yeah, no, I got you. Okay, yeah. this is what I said again. Put the eight at the front and change the seven to a nine. Okay. You okay. Got <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah. Well, see, you know what it is? I have a visual in front of me. You don't. So oh. that's it. You, you have to think about it. I have the visual in front of me. Okay, okay. Oh, Andre, uh, our producer wants to know what's 1875. Where you get that number from? <laughs> oh, man. All right. That's not me. That's not me. That's the producer's asking that question. So 1875, like 1875, like that's the... I When I was a kid, I dated this Jamaican girl. Like I think when I was... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Kumbaya, man. <laughs> so, like all, all the Jamaicans in the studio, Ricard is laughing. All yeah, the yeah, Jamaicans in the The Haitian is mad. The Haitian in the blue top is mad right now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you're saying. Haitian, Haitian guys always with Jamaican girls, and Haitian girls always with Jamaican guys. You know the story.
So, yeah. so, so I, I, at the time, she was like, what's your name? I said, Ricard. She was like, what? She's like, I'm going to call you Rick. I said, whatever. And then um, Mavado had a song called Star Boy. And so, like, she was like, I'm going to call you Rick Star. And I said, all right, I'm going to try and live up to the name. <laughs> that is, is, name for uh, me. 187. One, 187 is the code for murder. Like, I grew up in Brooklyn. So mm -hmm. I just put that at the end. And then I put the five, you know, everything, five-point star, added all together. So 1875. The one thing we love about Jamaicans, right? Mm -hmm. One thing about Jamaicans. Let's see this. Nah, I'm just telling you. If you have a sore foot, that's your nickname. Yeah, right. If you're short, your name is Shorty. <laughs> you have one leg, you need one leg. Americans, other people, you call them by 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 their deficiency, they're mad as heck. <laughs> they're mad. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. It's not that's nah, nah, nah. It, 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 your nickname, you know, if you're black, they call you blocker. <laughs> you're light, they call you browning. You 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 tell American cause the, the, the dogs you call them blocker. No, sir. No, sir, we call that. No man. Right. Yeah, my we call him Stretch and he tall, so they call him Stretch. Yeah, ex exactly, exactly. Uh, Americans get, I'm telling you, every time we call American, you so why are you insulting? No, 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 that's, it's not insulting, it's a compliment, mm. you know? Bigger. Uh, uh, are bigger because you're fat, you know, that's. <laughs> yeah, big, yeah, I had enough friends named Biggs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You, your, your, your head is big, they call you horse head. I just, I just... <laughs> anyway, guys, it's a, it's a pleasure, Ricard, speaking to you, Rick Star. Rick Star at one eight seven five. So bless up to you, and uh, looking forward to hearing more from you. When I get an opportunity, to get my number. Text me. I follow up, and I'll, I'll take a look at your podcast and see what's going on. Um, you know, we could share relations on the podcast, the Village Radio Talk Show, at all. So thank you so much for 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 blessing us with your presence today. All right, thank you for the opportunity. All mm -hmm. right, thank you for joining us. Thank you. God right. bless. Take care. Right, God bless. Um, oh yeah, the commercial. Um, that's that, that was uh, pretty good. Um, so we're brought to you by the Single Parent University, uh, where we have open admissions currently, going from um, now. So anytime you have an issue, especially now that the school starts and you need to know what to do with your young ones, especially a single mom, single dad, single grandparent, single aunt, single uncle, all the all the likes, do come out support. The single parent university where you get they're gonna give you a free child care, bring your child in, free transportation, social security hub, social support hub, um, resume and cover letter, career exploration, legal assistance. Come on, come on down. Call 646-779-6767 um, or text to SPU at 714-441. Um, yeah, so my 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 so I'm gonna bring on my cousin. Right, I'm bringing on my cousin right now. My yes. name is Charlene. Charlene Judith. Right, so I'm bringing her on now. She's in the studio. She was scared. I don't know why she was scared. She didn't want to come on the screen. Um, did you plug it in? Yeah, just just pull it up and um, text yourself and open up my messages. Are you want me to do it? All right. Um. So she's gonna come on. She just she she, she just came off the boat. Um, you know, and then and then she she came off the boat, and then she swam across the 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 oh, the, 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 the Florida Canal, right? She's here uh, goes another stereotype, right? She, uh, across the Florida. Yo, uh, what happened to collage? Did you ever create a collage? Um, did you ever did you, did you ever did you ever create the collage for for Labor Day so we could put it up so people could see. How safe Labor Day was, if people were enjoying themselves, right? Um, right to see how how that was. And um, yeah, do you did you have it? Here you go. Just uh, make sure you plug it back in so that it doesn't die. Yeah, so people can see it. So Andre's gonna work on that. Hey, Carlene, how you doing? So, um, hi everyone. Did I miss anyone today? Hi, Jan um, Janice. How you doing? Um, Empress, welcome, welcome. Uh, Star Girl, right? Knowledge, knowledge is power. Welcome to to um, to the village. So we're talking about things that I highlighted like in the mute the um, the third button from the top, right? Muted. 
Okay. So, it, it, you know, murder rates in New York have gone down um, a lot. That's what they say, but every day you're hearing. Listen, you're a fear mongera. I'm not a fear mongera. Let me tell you something. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I call my co hostess a fear mongera. I am the, not. The, the, the murder rate is a data, is a data point. I think they forge. No, everything forges. Lies, like, lies, like, lies, when, lies. Remember when when people were when people were dying from COVID left and right, they said these numbers are not real. They're trying to get you to take the vaccine, right? Okay. And and the even if the person in front of you is sick, they, oh no, it's not COVID. It's a lie. Murder rate thing. They tweaked it. There's no way. The mur no, the murder rate is going down. The issue is that people are still getting murdered. That's what the problem is, right? That's what the problem is in New York. It's not a. So last year a, we have more murders than this year. Is that what they're saying? No, the murder rate is trending down. It doesn't mean that you had less murders last year than this year. So remember, there were a lot of murders this year, mm. right? So if it's trending negatively, it doesn't it doesn't mean that they 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 weren't. It has to come up, come down from somewhere, right? So I don't know if they, let me check the data. Is it year to date oh, or? Let me see what it says. According to the NYPD statistics, crime in New York City increases increased by 26%, right? So there were 11,000 crimes, 11,600 plus crimes, right? Compared to 8,000. So, so the crime rate has increased by almost 3,000, mm -hmm. right? Almost, right? 2,500, right? Right, so right. I'm, I just said quick map off the top of my head. So don't quote me on the, on, on the, on the, right? Yeah. Because it's the same thing, right? So don't quote me on the the map. Don't kill me on that. Almost every category of crime increased last year. So you, I I see that for the fear mongers, they agree with that, right? So the exception. Fear mongers. Who the, the fear mongers? People. How many people you are? You know, a lot of you think you're the only one who's like who talks about like like crime, um, like crime as. Uh, as a as an impedance for them to do things, you're not the only person. That's why I said you need to talk about it more because a lot of people think like you. A lot of people think like you. You think you're the only one. I, I know friends who refuse to go. I had a conversation with my friend um, last week. I we were talking about his wife taking the subway, right? Mm -hmm. At least you talk about it. Is like when I don't get on the subway. Right, I know. When I told him to make his wife take the subway, he's like, "My wife's not going to cut subway." You know all the crimes that happen on the subway, but at least you talk about it, right? Like, so you're not the only person. So anyway, fatality um, at at parade was zero. There was one person who died at on a, from one truck to another, but really that day. Um, um, over the weekend, yeah, the person died, but the truck. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what happened. Okay. Right. So what happened, and they tell you this all the time, stop doing stupidness, stop running in front of the truck, stop driving behind the truck, stop jumping off the truck. Yeah. Oh, but I've done it a million times and nothing happened. So this one guy was jumped from one truck, a young man was jumped from one truck to another truck, fell off the truck and fell in between the truck and the truck ran over him eee. and severed his body. Eee. And he died on the spot. Like, it literally severed his body and he died. Oh, oh, oh. Right? So, on Labor Day? No, it wasn't Labor Day. It was one of the trucks that were going to be on Labor Day. But it didn't happen on Labor Day. No, I said it's one of the trucks okay. that were going to be on Labor Day. Okay. I wanted you to repeat it. That's why I said it again. Oh, gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. For effect. Okay. I gotcha. I understand. It didn't happen on Juve either, right? No, it did not. No, it did not. There was one shooting... There was one shooting on Saturday night or Sunday night. But it had nothing to do with Juve. Or it had nothing to do with Juve. It had nothing to do with the parade somebody was on. And we talk about, tell these people, like, some people don't this party. You got to move up. You got to move all the way up, all the way up, all the way up and to the mic or pull the mic to you. Yeah, house parties, right? House parties. Yeah, party. house parties. And people keep having these house parties and not having proper security. And people going in with their weapons and they're causing havoc, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you need to get the illegal guns off the street and make guns legal in our community. Then we're gonna have the Wild Wild West. Yeah. Do you have it in Florida, in Georgia? Of course. You have it. Of course you do. No, you do not. What? Go go look up Florida. Look at. Look, okay, look at. Andre, do me a favor. Look up the death rate 
of Florida by guns. How many people died in Florida last year by guns and where? And, Atlanta, and Georgia too, please. Georgia, Florida, and New York. Georgia, Florida, New York. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait. No, no, no. I need you to do it, but I'm going to tell you the states, right? Mm. Your, not Georgia, because they're not compatible in numbers to New York. So New York, California, Florida. You should Texas. do Georgia. You should do Georgia. Okay, do Georgia Good. to make her happy, right? Okay, so here's the collage. Oh, by the way, sitting next to me is my beautiful cousin. Hi, um, cousin. Let me see if you can see her. Her name, right? She's coming up visiting me from Jamaica. If you ever want a place to visit um, in Jamaica, it's right on, um, right in St. Elizabeth, right by Black River. It's called Gallon Beach. This is myself here and um, Sean Francois from Local 372. Say hi before you move on to the next picture. Hi, Doc. How are you? Great. Hi, great. Say hello to the villagers. Thanks for joining us. Hello, all villagers. How are you? Oh, I right. love the way she speaks. Yeah, yes, my she... pleasure is on this afternoon. All right. She, I'm the, enjoying the... the show, but my cousin just highlighted me and... Yeah, he said that I was afraid, but I'm not. All right. I don't know why she would be afraid. This is uh, hanging out with the Jamaicans from from uh, Jamaica. Oh, no, this is hanging out with our uh, uh, assembly member, assembly um, member Monique yes. Chandler Waterman um, up there, who's up for re up for re-election this year. And, uh, you know, she's a very uh, she's very fond and a supporter of the village. And this, she's very active in the community. A hundred percent. She's all over the place. Um, this is myself and can we make it a little, can you highlight it? This is myself and um, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, who is the uh, the majority, um, majority uh, leader, majority leader of the New York State Senate, mm -hmm. hanging out. This is Dr. Bryant, myself, with, you know, wearing our Haitian color, showing off her shoulders, her muscles. Look at her muscles. Nice. Look at her muscles right yeah. there. Make a muscle, make a muscle, make a muscle. And our uh, district attorney um, for Brooklyn, um, Eric Gonzalez. Who's that? Oh, that's my deputy bar president and our bar president, Antonio Renoso, and our deputy bar president, Diana Richardson. Okay, this is our uh, uh, Stacy Plaskett. I'm hoping I, I'm going to call her and hope we could get her on show. She's a congresswoman from. Uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands represent and the U.S. And also the Brooklyn Borough President. We definitely want him on. Oh, yeah, that's true, to get on the air. Um, looking forward to him. I can't see this one. Oh, this is a Haitian, uh, the Haitian float with Dr. Bryant. Where are you, Dr. Bryant? Are you I'm not in that picture, no. Sorry oh, you're the next one. All right, so this is the Haitian the Haitian culture. Myself and um, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, who's also the deputy um, leader of the... Our House of Representatives, and and uh, Joanne and her and her boyfriend, uh, uh, <laughs> State Senator Kevin Parker. Um, you know, you know it, put you right in your mouth, right? Uh, right. It's it's her it's her boyfriend and my mother's boyfriend as well. Um, when I don't know the two of them gonna fight, right? The um, Senator State Senator Kevin Parker of the twenty first nineteenth Central District, no twenty first twenty first Central District. All right. Oh, this was awesome. I had the opportunity to to speak to these these officers back here. Um, so we, I addressed um, over 200 officers on Labor Day Sunday at the 6th and Precinct and a lot of those who are dealing with the community and stuff. So this was kind of cool. Um, is this the same thing? I don't remember what this was. Oh, no, this is when the officers were actually... Or oh, the, oh, the correction officers. This, is the no, correction officer. this was in the correction officers. This is the regular officers. The correction officers were behind. I didn't take a picture of them. Oh, okay. No, this no, this is the correction officer. That's their flag, right? Is there. it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is our 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 um our <laughs> controller, yes. city yeah. city controller. He showed us the that they him can dance. Im, and, and you know what though? It's funny. But he was in rhythm better than better than your your host right yes. here. Yeah. He had more rhythm. Uh, what do you mean by yeah? I'm your cousin. Don't be saying no, yeah. yeah. But, are you telling me? 
you know, I actually had the video of him dancing. You know, oh, yeah. I don't know if Andre pulled it up. It, it no, is... Did I send it to you, Andre? Yeah, I you did I send did. it. I did see it. I, you did send it. Um, this is um, your friend whose group was performing on the parade. Yeah, the the young people. Mm -hmm. were it, right, right, right here. I've got the name of the group. What's the name of the group? Bu, Bu. B okay, Bu. They go all over and they're marching. This and is the the pull that up. That's this the is, end. That's the Jamaica um, consulate. The, the Jamaica uh, uh, contingent from the Council General of Jamaica, New York, um, and Jamaica Biddle, Bickle, and they're you know strong advocate, obviously off Jamaica and the the, the diaspora um, itself. So Dr. Bryant and I were hanging out with them as well. So um, you know what I love here, about here's the video. You know what I love about this? Our boy, who um, my my co-host Roderick, living his best life every single day and that's what i appreciate seeing and hanging out with you you know you're showing people don't let things take over but you beat them kick their behind and show that you can live life and live your best life because he's always traveling left and right but he's over there partying he's over there doing better than he was doing prior to him becoming sick so thank you for showing people that you even through that with prayer and faith and, and family surrounding you and good friends and, you know, constantly eating to him, you know, over here. He went from being invisible to being full. You know, we just thank God for your life and for being able to show people that, hey, go out and live. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. Um, hey, 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 Carleen, how you doing? How's everything going? Um, you know, but also my job also is to get your behind out there. <laughs> right, because you and I'm trying to get you and and Andre, right? Andre's a punk too. He don't want to come outside, right? Uh, and uh, you know, get them all outside on the street to go hang out. Yeah, and, first, first of all, I don't go to Labor Day Parade. I had a traumatic. Oh wait, wait. Let me ask you. Yeah, I, you had all all of the fear and trepidation. Good morning. <laughs> I oh. right, all of the fears and trepidations about um, going out. How do you feel? after going out this time, walking the parade. Like, can I count on you next year? With me? Yeah, yeah, with you. Put me on the spot right now. Because God is going to keep me through <laughs> next year if I walk the parade. Can I count on you? Uh, I guess. No, I, I guess. Because, I, I, you know, the, it, it, you, the show is, is taped and, 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 and recorded, right? Can I count on you to play be here next year? All right, I'll be there next year if Andre is there with me. Oh, well, I didn't, don't put no stipulation. Don't put no stipulation. <laughs> Will you be there next year? Hey, Auntie Maureen, what's going on? Right? You know what? I, I had fun. Uh -uh, just yes. Yes or no? Oh, yes. I, I'll be there next year. As long okay, as you're good. there with me. No, you can't say that either. Uh, I have no, stip to, no I stipulation. Have some form of stipulation. No stipulation. No, no, none at all. No stipulation. Okay, is okay. Better yet. If I get to dance with the controller, I'll be there. Andre, I, I just send you the I video. I, I just <laughs> send you the video of the controller. Right. I um Andre. So the next question for good you. Good morning. Is there next year. <laughs> I always say good morning. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Start hold of a day. No, uh, Andre. <laughs> Andre, let's ask again. Andre, will you be there next year? Ah. Huh? We don't hear Andre. Andre, no, he goes see, he goes see and no. Oh, oh, hold, oh, crap. Flight um, everything excited, so I will say that. But good afternoon, everyone. So it's my name is Roderick Daly. I am the chair of Community Board Seventeen, so that, that covers all of six, all of the six seven precinct, and we're touching a couple others, but primarily six seven. I just, it's an honor to be here to partner with all of you, with uh, Deputy Inspector Saliba and every everyone else. I've been involved personally with the 6-7 since, uh, actually, you know what, uh, Chief? About the same time, 2001. Yes, sir. Because I was a teacher over at My 11 down the street right there before I became involved. So, um, I just want to say, you know, today, guys, the community loves you, right? The, the, we love the 6-7. We love our officers. We love what you do. Amen. You do have... Like Deputy Inspector said, you have the 0.01% who are 
let's avoid them. Right, but in 99.9% .9 of our community, we love our officers and our, our president of the 6-7 precinct, Patrick Patricia Rada, makes sure that happens as well. And I, as a chair, I love my officers. I love what we do. I've had a relationship with all the officers, all of the inspectors, all the way up to um, Deputy Inspector Saliba here. So I just want to take the opportunity now to say, listen, your work is hard, but no job is easy. Right? So go out there. Enjoy the community, say hello, stop by, play some dominoes, have you know, have a glass of water and have a dance and enjoy yourself because the community loves you and we love the job that we do. So hip hop hooray to all of you yeah. for the work that you do every day, night in and night out. Because yeah. you put your lives on the line Amen. to protect Amen. our community yeah. and for that. We appreciate everything that you do. God yes. bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right, so that's just a basically having it, it was a, it was an honor and and thank you. I, I by the way, Judith, you're not the only person I put on the spot, okay. right? Not the only person I put it because I put her, uh, Dr. Bryant on the spot, right? I put Dr. Bryant on the spot to say the prayer, but the guy came back. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. I did ask Andre. Earlier. You got to speak up louder. I did ask Andre earlier. Um, this is not the first time Doc, Doc, Doc is coming on because I've seen her already. Oh, she's my co-host. She's there every week unless yeah, something's so wrong. You see, I watch, I watch always watching the show in Jamaica. And right now I have Jamaica watching it. No, I sent the link <laughs> to them. <laughs> yeah. Kumbaya, man. Yeah, so I, I was saying, uh, so because I got her to come on the front of the screen, yeah. I want to tell all my audience out there, whenever you travel to Jamaica, right, we have a little spot in St. Elizabeth yeah. called, um, what's, tell us a little bit about the spot and tell what you guys prepare and stuff like that. Okay. Galaxy's Resort. It's right at Gallon Beach, Crawford, St. Elizabeth. You need to move closer to the mic. Galaxy's Resort in Gallon Beach, St. Elizabeth, or we call it St. Best. The best place to be in Jamaica. That's St. Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, we offer fish roast fish, steamed fish, escovish fish, whatever fish you want, um, lobster, shrimp, um, food. We offer, dishes, we have, we have, of course, indigenous, we, we, offer, we offer traditional food, right? Yes. Jamaican food. Yes. And, and what, tell us about the soup. Okay. What we kind of soup do you make? Conk soup. <clears throat> yeah. Conk, um, you know, conk is the, oh, oh I'm on the air. Yes. Conk you can, you like, can say it, but clean it oh, up. You can't oh, clean it up. You oh. can't say it, but clean it up. Yes, conk is when you're dead. Um, you can, you can, you can, you can rise. Oh, no, no, no. It's yeah. it's an it, it's it's help with ED. You can say that. Oh, you, can, it you can with ED. There you go. There, oh, you can okay. say it. You can say it. It it it, it, it helps to bring up your virility. Yeah, yes. you, you can say that. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. aren't you a church sister? You can you can say that. Well, yeah. you're right. You're free. The, the pastor just think. said pornography just now. I, I was so <laughs> I know, you said you'd be watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm a Christian. Uh, listen. I, I'm not a stush person, you know. You don't know that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't. I tell people all the time. I have eyes to see, mm -hmm. hands to touch. So I don't pretend like I don't see people or say things. Mm -hmm. I don't hide behind the mask, mm -hmm. right? I pretend, pretend like it's what you do with you, because what you see in me is who you see. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I live one way and then hide the next way, like pretend. No, 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 no. I can't bother with that. But anyway, so what? You know, we have a, a very <laughs> famous cousin in our family, right? You know, he, 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 and he comes by once in a while and he practices at Gallon Beach. Who's that cousin we have in our family? You know him? You're thinking about it? He's from Shrewsbury. Where is he? Being a man. Oh, <laughs> so he comes by Gallon Beach once in a while and come practice? Yes, yes he does. Yes. Uh, right. What, what is that like when you saw him there, when he came by the first time? What, what was that? Um, it, was, it was very, very excited. Um. And we have, anyways, we have live bands um, on Sundays. Um, every other Sundays, we do have live bands. Um, um, let me advertise my business, yeah? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I'm giving you a moment to talk. Yeah, on Fridays, every last Friday, we have girls hangout, um, hot girl style out. Um, and also, we have a resort where you can stay over, overnight. Um, and it's right, seat, it's, it's, it's right between, right by the way, by the ladies and gentlemen, it's right between Black River and Barda, 
right? Black River and Border. It's, it's, you know, if you want more information, obviously, you can get in touch with with me, right? Definitely. And then you know, if you go into centers, but yeah, what is it like? And there are other places around there that you can stay and then enjoy. And they open every day. Every day. Oh. When is the most popping night? Friday night. Friday night. Friday Saturday. Friday, Saturday's yes. most popular. You can yes. play some domino there. Definitely. Oh, by the way, it's literally, ladies, it's literally on the beach. On the beach. It's literally on the beach that you can hang out. I, I, I would say you hang out and you chill all day, enjoy the, 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 the country. You could even get a boat that takes you out into the river a little bit. You can actually hire a boat. They can actually hire a boat for you and do scenic stuff while you're there. Um, so, what is the most thing you're proud of? of Gallian Beach because we have to what, wrap up. What's the most one thing that you're proud of? Most? Well, we have the best beach in, in Jamaica. Right there. So Right there. And by the truck off in I Beach? Sure. And go swim? You ever yes. going to go swim? Yes, sure. My bikini, of course, yes. In, in, well, hope you don't go swim in, a, in a, your, um, your, your, your street clothes mm -hmm. or your birthday suit. No, neither one. In the night. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Kumbaya, man. It yeah. is about that time. We are wrapping up. We just want to thank you for joining us this evening. We want to thank you, cousin, for coming to hang out with us all the way from Jamaica. For those, um, daddy, daddy -o, um, happy birthday to you. Um, happy belated birthday to Roger's dad. That's what, who I'm referring to. Um, and I want to tell people, you know what? That's cool. We yes go. yes i you know what ne next week I, i'm hoping that we could get a couple of parents on a couple of teachers on to talk about the first week of school because although today is not this is the first day a lot of people didn't show up because they don't look at it because thursday or friday they don't think that today's a real day of school um my, my son had homework today so he wasn't very happy he was like one of two classes that had homework um and my son all the sudden so happy. i'm in a second grade so you know all of that is excited god bless each and every one of you thank you for watching sharing viewing listening to the village right here on 92.1 fm on our youtube station the village radio talk show on my facebook page dr brian's facebook page, andre sophia and john's facebook page we're looking forward to seeing you next week god's willing god spare you are awesome you make this show happen, and we thank you for that. Join us again next week, all of our villagers. God bless. Good night. Good thank night. you for joining us. And thank I you, and thank you, Judith, for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right.